Hello dear students, in this lecture we are going to discuss wheat which is a cereal and it comes under economic botany topic uh, which is also called plant resource. So wheat belongs to cereals and the botanical name of wheat is Critica mestrivum. In Hindi, it is called Gehu or Kanak. It belongs to the family Poesi, which was earlier called as Gramini. Now, the economically important part of wheat is uh, Caryopsis, which is a fruit or grain. So, the grain is produced in a inflorescence, uh, which is a spike of spikelet in wheat now uh, a mature grain consists of an embryo starchy endosperm proteinaceous allulon layer and a husk so you can see this is the inflorescence of wheat and these this is the grain of wheat and when you cut this grain this is the um, section of the wheat in which we see the various parts so uh, a mature grain consists of an embryo which is located here and then it consists of a starchy endosperm so this white portion is starchy endosperm and then there is a proteinaceous aileron layer and a husk so this is the longitudinal section of wheat and this is the transverse section of wheat so you can see that there is a aileron layer uh, and then there is whitish endosperm here then embryo is located here and this is these are two cross sections of wheat grain now the wheat flour is used for breads cakes biscuits and other confectionery products starch which is obtained from wheat is employed in the preparation of beer industrial alcohol and other alcoholic beverages for sizing textiles wheat straw is used for weaving chairs mattresses stuffing baskets packing cattle feed etc the largest producer of wheat is usa and other producing wheat wheat producing countries are russia china canada australia india now in india it is a major cereal and covers 12 percent of total area under cultivation and uh, 76 percent of that is under winter cereals so it is mainly cultivated in up haryana punjab and madhya pradesh in india and various species of wheat includes triticum estivum triticum durum triticum dicocum and triticum spherococcum so triticum estivum is a hexaploid species triticum durum and dicocum are your uh, tetraploid and then there is tri triticum so here you can see welcome. this is the live is plant the this is the picture of, of a plant so where you see the leaves and this is inflorescence then uh, this is the dried spikelet and these are the grains when you cut the section uh, in your practical classes and see under microscope this is how the grains look so you see that the seed has uh, basically this is a fruit so it has a pericarp and the pericarp uh, is followed by seed coat which is followed by uh, nucellus aileron layer and then starchy endosperm so when you see the grain coat when you see in the longitudinal section you see the grain coat then aileron layer then starchy endosperm and then you have embryo which has a shoot apex and a root cap so you this you you will see when you cut under uh, cut it with a very fine blade and see under microscope now the wheat grain is a dry one seeded indehiscent fruit which is known as caryopsis the grain may be either hard or soft in texture with a creamy white amber red or purple color depending upon the variety so there are many species of wheat and uh, they differ in color the dorsal sur uh, convex surface of the kernel is smooth save for the uh, base where the um, fruit 
coat is wrinkled indicating the position of the embryo so uh, you see that this is the dorsal surface and uh, this is the position of the embryo uh, so wrinkled for uh, wrinkled uh, coat indicates the position of the embryo the ventral surface is flat and characterized by uh, deep furrow or groove so you can see here that this is your dorsal surface and the ventral surface has a furrow or groove um, so uh, the ventral surface has a furrow or groove or crease and the tip of the grain has tuft of persistent stiff hairs uh, known as brush so you can see here when uh, when you see closely you can see that uh, you can see some brush like hairs so this is at the tip now uh, so this is the section of the um, um, longitudinal section of the fruit uh, and and these are the details so which we have already discussed that the pericarp is uh, followed by seed coat and then it is followed by nucellus and then it is followed by um, um, an, uh, aileron layer and then starchy endosperm so majority of the um, of seed is filled with whitish endosperm the tissues of the pericarp form a thin protective covering and consists of several layers uh, the epidermis hypodermis remnants of thin walled cell intermediate cells cross cells and tube cells so these uh, different kinds of cells they are not visible under microscope um, but uh, you this is just for your knowledge that if you cut very fine section then only you will be able to see these different uh, type of cells which are present in pericarp the seed coat or testa is firmly fused with innermost cells of the pericarp that is cross and tube cells on the outside and nucellar epidermis on the inside so the nucellar layer is composed of a single uh, row of compressed cells between testa and endosperm this here you can see that this is pericarp and then this is nucellar layer uh, so uh, the nucellar layer is composed of a single row of compressed cells between testa and endosperm and endosperm makes up about 82 percent of the grain by weight so this is endosperm this is endosperm and this is endosperm this is the major portion of the grain the delimiting layer of endosperm the aileron layer is rich in nutrients particularly niacin um, vitamins of b group and minerals so the aileron layer which is a single layer it is rich in um, niacin vitamins b group and minerals it has also high protein content but is devoid of gluten and starch the remaining portion of the endosperm is chiefly composed of endosperm so when you cut a trans uh, longitudinal section this is starch when you cut a transfer section this is starch now the embryonic axis consists of a plumule surrounded by sheath known as coleopetyle and primarily root or radical enclosed by coleoriza or root sheath so here you can see that this is your embryo which has coleopetyle and um, your coleoriza here it, this is embryo in this section and in this section you can see that this is embryo so if you cut a very fine section you can see these parts very easily under microscope um, the embryonic axis consists of plumule surrounded by sheath known as coleopetyle uh, um, the primary root or radical enclosed by coleoriza or root sheath and attached to the embryonic axis near the endosperm is a fleshy shield like structure the cotyledon or scutellum it forms the greater portion of the embryo opposite the scutellum there is a small scale like growth known as epiblast so here you can see that this is your epiblast and here this is your scutellum so the, what is what are these two parts uh, 
attached to the embryonic axis near the endosperm is a fleshy shield like structure the cotyledon or scutellum which is visible here and it forms the greater portion of the embryo and opposite the scutellum there is a small scale like growth known as epiblast which is visible here so a well developed kernel contains about 9 to 10 percent bran coat which is composed of pericarp testa and nucellar layer 2.5 percent germ or embryo and 85 to 86 percent starchy endosperm and 3 to percent aluron so this is the total composition of the grain these are on the closer view of uh, dorsal side of the grain ventral side of the grain transverse section of the grain longitudinal section of the grain and different parts of the grain in pericarp and seed coat so please refer economic botany by coacher for all the food plants which we have discussed so far this is a very good book and when you see what are the economic importance of wheat so wheat and its wheat products contribute substantially to the world's food supply and they constitute an important source of carbohydrates and it is its preeminence over other cereals is due to its baking qualities wheat is consumed all over the world in various forms in advanced countries it is consumed primarily in the form of bread uh, but the wheat in, but in wheat growing regions like india nearly 85 to 90 percent of it is used in the form of chapatis and preparations such as roti naan paratha etc now the flour from soft wheat is chiefly used for making cakes biscuits pastries crackers and other products and the hard wheat product uh, provides excellent flour for bread making durum wheat which is your tetraploid wheat varieties are specially hard and they are preferred by the manufacturers of macaroni spaghetti semolina vermicelline other products such as noodles small amounts of wheat uh, are converted into breakfast food uh, like wheat flakes puffed wheat and shredded wheat so basically it is its uses in edible purposes now in industries industrial uses of wheat includes manufacture of starch gluten distilled spirits malta pasta etc and wheat starch is used in laundries for finishing clothes gluten is used for the production of monosodium glutamate which is a product that intensifies the flavor of food and as we have already discussed wheat bran which is rich in proteins of approximately 14 to 18 percent in vitamins is valued livestock feed it is employed in the human diet not only for its nutritional qualities but for its role as roughage uh, and indigestible material which stimulates intestinal peristalsis and adds bulk to the waste mass and we straw is used as a livestock food stuff animal bedding and compost some wheat straw is used for making paper as well as high quality insulated building board so these are some of the economic importance of wheat in industry for edible purposes and for other products i hope the topic is clear to you and please refer books and especially coacher for reading this topic Thank you students, we will be meeting in next lecture now.